A counter example, a use of a counter data type with a conveyor. In our next lab project, it was a challenge, if you like, or a practical example using count up, count down, and reset instructions. And in that practical example, we were back to our conveyor system with four photo eyes. We have two motorized conveyors and one gravity conveyor, roller conveyor. And these four photo eyes are positioned to do certain things. Now we know one PE and two PE, one duty that they serve is to discern the length of the carton that's either less than the distance between the two optical paths or greater. And of course, one PE is probably going to be adjusted as close as is possible to the entrance of one conveyor, where two PE is probably and its reflector individually adjusted, but slidable along the conveyor to adjust to work with different carton sizes. And then 3PE and 4PE, some material handling companies, they go cheap on the photo eyes and they'll only have 4PE. They won't have 3PE. So when it comes to counting cartons on and off of a conveyor, they consider that when it, when it blocks 4PE's optical path, then technically after a few seconds, it's off of one conveyor and onto two conveyor. We're using two photo eyes. My material handling systems are always have the deluxe sensor accompaniment. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the count up, count down instructions and the reset, and we're going to increase the view of our virtual process. The more things that you add to the code involving sensors and the reasoning of sensor events and time, the more of a data structure that you're building that represents your process. In other words, right now with these sensors and the conveyor motors, we know six pieces of information. We know that we've turned one conveyor on or off and two conveyor on and off. That's two pieces, two bits. And then we have four photo eyes. With these four photo eyes, we know whether or not there is something blocking the optical path of one PE and or two PE and or three PE and or four PE. So that's six bits of data that is our data structure. In other words, we're creating a structure of data that represents our process. In this case, we've got six bits to work with, two outputs and four inputs. I had you add two new rungs and put them right below the conveyor rung. This is the conveyor, conveyor one. When you put in the pointer input colon 0, .0 slash 4, it may have popped up with something else for text. And that's fine. A way to make sure that you're not already using that input is to right click on it and go to cross reference and you see there's only one use of it. See this is input and I can scroll up a little bit to make sure that there's not something missing up above but input 4 which now I've labeled 3PE is only used in file 2 rung 2 and the next bit used in memory is B300. So if I double, if I click on that, it'll take me right to the, that usage from the cross-reference. Next thing we had to do was to send cartons through the system. And I'll drag this over here. And I put screen captures right next to it. Now we have the preset set at three. That's because we're saying that three is the most cartons of a particular size that we can put on one conveyor. In other words, if you allow for a little space in between them and being all the way on the conveyor, clear of 1 PE, but not blocking 3 PE. So if you take the distance between 1 PE and 3 PE, put three cartons in there and then add some space so they are what I call singulated, singular, that's about the maximum that you can fit on that conveyor. Then over to the right here, I show you the accumulate incrementing at different positions of cartons on the conveyor. So right now there's zero accumulated. Now when this carton blocks one PE, 
you could say that there's a carton on the conveyor at that point. However, you might want to argue that it's not on until this carton clears 1 PE. It doesn't have to block 2 PE, but to say that it's fully on the conveyor, you would want it to clear 1 PE, not just block it. But for right now, we're doing it with the most obvious logic. Typically, what this is what you would do. And then later on, you would say, okay, wait a minute. The system shut down and that carton wasn't really on there and then it started back up and somehow got caught at, counted twice or something. So typically, we would use the trailing edge of the carton to say that it has arrived, not the leading edge. But for right now, this is good. So you see we're incrementing our accumulant value and we're doing this with the switches that operate the photo eyes. Because remember, we don't actually have cartons in photo eyes. We do have the motor running, and we have 1 PE and 3 PE that do the count up. So I could also operate 1 PE and 2 PE to do the size fault. I'm not going to convolute this whole process. I'm just going to use 1 and 3 PE. If I uh, toggle on 1 PE, or rather I should say, oh, I'm offline, got to download this project. Let's uh, put a cart in front of 1 PE. Okay, notice that the counter incremented by 1. And of course it's going to block that as long as the conveyor's running. And when I downloaded it, I forgot to start it. So I cheated. I'll go back and clear this. Not a biggie. Then turn on the conveyor. Got to turn on input zero first because that's a normally closed button. So it would be true if on. Then we'll start the conveyor. We can turn on, we've got a carton leaving the gravity conveyor and it's blocking one PE. Then it clears it. Now this show's done because I did not put a preset in there three like I had you do. I can do that right now. It's not going to hurt a thing because I can access it. They just made the done bit go off, but we weren't using the done bit for anything yet. So input two again. Now there's three cartons on there and it's done. Now we could keep counting cartons on there if we wanted to. The problem is that only three will fit on there. And since we're our photo eyes are really our fingers on push buttons or toggle switches, we need to be careful what we're doing. And then Input four is count off. So I can count one off, count one on, count one off, count one on, count one off, count one on. So we, we're keeping conveyor one full with three cartons. And then as we keep getting more cartons coming onto the conveyor, or let's say there aren't any more cartons coming, what's going to happen is that we're going to count cartons off of the conveyor onto conveyor two. Every time that happens, and now we have none left. You could push that button again, 3PE, and it would decrement that accumulate from zero to minus one. Well, there's no such thing as a minus one carton. So you can see there's a bunch of things here left to do to make this logic more complete and more plausible. I'm editing the logic to add the timers in to allow us to use the trailing edge plus a little delay to give us a some singulation, put some space between the cartons. And rather than do this all without you seeing it, I want to show you an easy way to add the logic. So I put my focus on the count up instruction, then I select on the branch around. I branch it around and then I move it down. Now I can put my TON up here and so forth. Another thing that we did was I took the, this was the stop push button. I had to change it to reset fault. I might have used different text reset button, but anyway. Use B30 slash 15 to unlatch the size fault, and then B30 14 to reset counter 5. And this would be typically used on an HMI where there was a jam or things got messed up, so they pulled all the cartons off of one conveyor, 
then they hit a button on the screen that clears the count. So it basically resets the system to a clean slate. Now we go back to 1PE and 3PE and I'm going to turn on 1PE the make sure our conveyor is still running, yes it is. I'm going to turn on 1PE which is input 2 and it stays on as long as the carton is blocking the optical path, but notice it doesn't count. C50 is still 0. When it clears 1PE, a 1 second timer starts and 1 second later the dumb bit from the timer does the false true transition for the count up addressing C5 colon 0. If another one comes in, it's blocking. Remember it doesn't get counted when it blocks the photo, only when it clears and 1 second after it clears. Do another one, passing in front of 1PE, clears 1PE, one second later, it counts up. Now there's two things that the timer does. One, it definitely creates a space between the cartons. Now right now the conveyor is running. So right now there's a lot of space behind that last carton, but we're not done with this logic yet. It all depends on whether you're using this conveyor for a buffer conveyor, where you want to build up three cartons before you feed any downstream or if you're just passing them through and checking them for size. The other thing that the, the timer does, if I were to flicker 1PE, which is input 2, so watch closely. If I flicker it, so it doesn't count up until it hits the final. Okay, we're, we're way over count now. I don't know if you caught all that. But if I tap input 2 really fast, it's only going to take the last one and count it. See, I've only got a count of one there. The, what that does is that eliminates counting bobbles. When things move on the conveyor, they don't move necessarily really smooth. The conveyor may itself have some bumpy surface underneath the belt or the carton could be sitting on the stitching where the conveyor belt is joined together and so it's actually centered out and it's rocking back and forth as it's traveling. In a situation like that if all that we were doing was using the trailing edge of the photo eye to count up and it bobbled a couple times clearer than it wasn't then it's clearer than it wasn't it would count all those you get a miscount so that timer does a couple things not only does it create a little space between them if you're actually controlling the motors to get how many you want on and off but the main thing it does it, it does prevent counting cartons that are bobbling counting them more than once so it's kind of filters out noise if you like that. 3PE, we'll turn that on. Now we got a carton going off of conveyor 1 and when it clears 3PE after one second then we count it as off. I'm going to count some back on. Okay, I've got three cartons back on conveyor 1. Now I'm going to take them off of conveyor 1 onto 2 conveyor. The optical path is blocked but nothing happens until it clears 3PE and then one second later it counts it down. So now all three cartons have left one conveyor to wherever they're going. Now we happen to know they went onto 2 conveyor and of course they won't go on a 2 conveyor unless 2 conveyor is running and 2 conveyor was not running. We don't even have it really in the logic. We've got motor one up here, that's the conveyor. We don't have any other motors. So technically we weren't running two conveyor and maybe in your mind you're thinking they're piling up. Well in reality they would have, but that's not, we're developing our logic. Right now they're going off onto the floor. They haven't even installed two conveyor yet. We're looking at a diagram of the finish system, but we only had one conveyor to work with. However you want to picture it in your head so it works for you. By the way, you notice that our loop system is still working. As long as that conveyor is running, we're still doing loop pulses. Every 12 seconds you'll see this go on for a second and a half. There you go. 
and then it starts over again. We just keep adding a little logic to this until we get a nice chubby little project. A couple questions in the manual. What can you say about where the cartons are at when they are counted on or off of one conveyor? Well, they're clear of the foot away by at least one second of travel. With this scenario, are the cartons more on or off of the prospective conveyors or less on or off? Well, they're more on. Why? You're using the trailing edge plus one second. 